prostrate fall Bring forth the royal diadem And crown him Lord of all Bring forth the royal diadem And crown him Lord of all Magandang maga po. Ako po ay si Dr. Napil from uh, Pila Laguna. Welcoming you to our uh, prayer covenant. Ngayon pong umaga ay uh, tatalakayan po natin yung uh, isang chapter no, sa New Testament. And that is Philippians chapter 3 verse 4 to 14. Basahin ko po sa inyo sa English Standard Version. Though I myself have uh, reason for confidence in the flesh also, if anyone else thinks uh, he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, 
a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as in righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as lost for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as lost because of the surpassing work of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of the things and count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and he found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes to faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his suffering, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this, or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brother, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the price of the outward call of God in Christ Jesus. So, ito po ay sulat ni Pablo sa mga taga-Pilipos habang siya po ay nasa kulungan no, no, sa Roma. Ayun po, uh, dito po, uh, Paul, who was once uh, oh, known as the apostle to the Gentiles points out that he has all the credentials as a Jew and more. He was born from a pure family line of Israelites. He was also a strict Pharisee and he was zealous from the Jewish and Pharisee viewpoint to the point of being a persecutor of the church in his earlier days. But Paul came to see that all this religious status and achievement had left him spiritually bankrupt. All is lost. Paul's confidence before had been in himself in his own religious performance until when he encountered Christ. It became obvious that his confidence needed to be in Christ and not in himself. In fact, Paul counts his previous assets and accomplishments as a righteous man or religious man not only lost but rubbished. On the positive side, there is much to gain when one gains Christ. Paul writes that a person gains justification, that is righteousness before God. A person gains sanctification, the transformation of life, and glorification, the resurrection from the dead. True righteousness can be obtained only by abandoning one's own effort and turning his faith or turning in faith in Jesus. Now, because of humanity's sinfulness, true righteousness can only be a gift. It will never be an achievement. One receives not only righteousness by faith in Christ, but also the transformation of life. He then become, or he or she then becomes more Christ-like more and more each day, rejecting sinful desires, no? rejecting sinful desires. Yes, there will be suffering as in Christ because it is by this means no, that life is renewed and God's will is made perfect. And finally, when we are in Christ, one obtains eternal life, the perfection of the body and soul at the last day.
Only faith in Jesus brings about the righteousness. Therefore, to be righteous in Christ is a central proclamation in the New Testament. The good news of the gospel. Paul's experience in faith in Christ is unique. It is the experience of a sinner saved by grace. Paul is every a sinner and every a Christian. Now Paul's wish is that he very much want his perfection. That is to be everything he ought to be as a follower is Christ. To be made perfect in Christ. Once again, Paul presses in on Christ Jesus, confident in God's grace through him and seeking to please God. And like Paul, we as Christians are to pass on and to take hold of Christ more today than yesterday, more tomorrow than today. To God be the glory, let us pray. You, Lord, light our ways before us. You gave us clear instruction and keep us firmly on the path of righteousness. We claim victory over our enemies. Your word is ever before us. Your word is tested, tried, and true. We put our complete trust in you. You, God, enlighten us with your understanding concerning the plan you have for our lives. You have set us free from all hindrances. You have made us secure and capable in you. We maintain steadfast resistance to the attacks of the enemy and we live in a place of blessing and prominence because of your love for us. Your Spirit leads and directs our steps. The Holy Spirit is our helper and friend. He gives us wisdom, insight, and clarity concerning the decisions that we make. Your wisdom, Lord, and counsel establish the firm foundation of our faith. Lord, work in us and through us to fulfill your plan and purpose for our lives and to minister your love to us. As we acknowledge and worship you, we thank you that you direct and guide our steps. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Paul, and God bless.